Good day, peoples. Pedro Mota here, back with another video. And it's just happening, man. The videos just keep coming from now on. Today, I'm going to share with you my quick and dirty way of calculating the cost of a long motorcycle trip across the globe. We're going international, baby, and it's going to get messy because I mean it, quick and dirty. So let's get in it. <laughs> Folks, how's life in your neck of the woods? Hope all is good. Here on the edge of South America, we're having a few dreary winter days again, but all will pass. So as a few of you know, I've been traveling around the world on my motorcycle for a few years now. And before that, I've done all sorts of shorter trips on a motorbike. And if there's something of which I know where it all goes, then that is money. So let me help you out and give you a quick and dirty rundown of the daily costs on the road for let's say six months. We'll start with more precise and easier to predict numbers and move towards more ambiguous calculations that depend a lot more on your circumstances and preferences like nationality, travel style, motorcycle and the countries you're going to ride through. This, <laughs> I can't do it as like a normal person. If you like spreadsheets with exact numbers and low margin of errors, then this might not really be for you. Exact numbers will only go so far with this kind of travel and a lot of it will depend on your circumstances. Though for sure, experience with this kind of travel will surely help you out cook up more accurate estimates. Now, take my hand and let me show you one of the quickest ways to squander your savings, but at least you'll have one hell of a ride. Let's start with the daily cost, and this really is the core of your calculations. How long you're going to travel and how far will decide the brunt of your expenses. First of all, we're going to make an estimate of the distance that you'll be traveling. You already know more or less where you want to go, right? So open up your favorite online map app and uh, let's go have a look. All right, folks, now let's get a uh, mapping. Hold up, why are you all so uh, far away? for uh, familiarity and ease of use. I'm gonna go with uh, Google Maps here, but over the years, it has definitely fallen from grace with me because uh, years ago, they quit having unlimited waypoints and just too many roads are missing, you know? By the way, pro tip, if you're looking for smaller, more obscure roads, even off-road, use Bing Maps. Hold up, hold up, please stop, don't unsubscribe. I'm, I'm serious here. Bing Map actually shows you more roads. Try it out on Mongolia and Tajikistan. It's brilliant. All right, let's get going with the fun part, and that's the mapping. We got the whole damn world at our feet here. So uh, let's zoom out here from uh, Chile and South America and go across the ocean. And where will we start? You know what? I'll start where uh, I started out a few years ago. Directions uh, from here. And where will we go? You know what? We'll go to Vladivostok. Boom. Let's look at that. Look at that. That's basically what I did four years ago. This is pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Actually, any motorcycle can do this. This is all tarmac, man, all the way. You can ride from one side of the continent to the other. So basically, you could take any bike. Any bike will do to get there. There's another uh, video of mine uh, where I talk about that. So let's spruce this up just a little bit, all right? Let's see what's on the menu. So you gotta have a little bit of fun in Europe, right? So we go straight to, boom, the beautiful Alps. We go to the Stelvio Pass, and then we'll go here to the coast in Croatia, and a little bit of Balkan action. And then, of course, while we're there, we have to go through the Carpates. Can't miss out on that. So we move on, you know, we'll go to, uh, we go a bit through, uh, through uh, Kazakhstan while we're at it. And, of course, cherry on top, a bit of Mongolia. This should be a bit of fun already with a little bit of off-road action in uh, Mongolia. There we have it, 15,000 kilometers, pretty nice number. Any wise rider will add 20, 25% to that number. So that will give us what, 20,000 kilometers, which makes about 12 and a half thousand miles. Yeah, I did that all in here. Now don't be surprised if it ends up being more, but if it ends up being less, your wallet will be pleasantly surprised. You're going to be riding a lot more than you think. When you're out there traveling, there's going to be a lot of non-destination related riding. You can't really predict that, but what I can tell you is that the kilometers can stack up really quick. And I've uh, shot myself in the foot a few times like that. And I was like, where did all the fuel money go? It's not really fuel money, it's just money and it just goes. Hi right, folks, we got the distance. Let's uh, get some fuel numbers. Next, we figure out a few average fuel prices based on a few long stints of the ride. Europe and Turkey is going to be expensive, probably around one and a half euros. 
That's about a dollar and 70 cents per liter. And when I was in Russia, it was about one euro. And I checked it now and it's about 60 euro cents. So when it comes to fuel price, it's a great time to ride in Russia at the moment. And for the relatively short stint in Kazakhstan, the price will probably be around the same. And it looks like the same goes for Mongolia, but the fuel there can be so bad when you're not on the main road that you'll probably use a lot more of it. And that's definitely the case when you're off-roading. You are going to off-road while in Mongolia, right? By the way, when you want to know the prices in dollars, just add about 10 to 15% to the price in Euro. And if you want to know the fuel prices around the world, it's super easy nowadays. There's heaps of resources online. Just search and you'll find it. So that's a total of 20,000 kilometers. As a rider, you probably have fuel estimate models that are up there with NASA calculations, which you use to predict fuel consumption. Am I right? So how many kilometers or miles does your motorcycle do under load at your average cruising speed? Now let's bust out the whiteboard and do some final calculations. That's not a word. This is the math. I'm very, very good at that. Not really, not my greatest achievement in high school. I uh, think I had too many words in my head, not enough room for numbers. So we got a 20,000 kilometer total and we did about 7,000 in Europe and about 13,000 in the rest of the world. And Alp does about 18 kilometers per liter on a good day. So we divide those numbers by 18, which is 388 and here 722. And we multiply this number here with the fuel price in Europe, this number here with the fuel price in the rest of the world, which was about 0 0.6, which is 621. I don't have any more space. <laughs> totally did not rewrite this. Uh, move along, folks. Totals. 621 totals 433. Adding these up with mathematical arrows gives you 1,054 euros. And since we're at it, we might as well round that number up to 1,100. There you go. They did the math. So this would be around $1,200. The one last thing, we draw a little happy bush here full of sunshine. And there you have it, people. Your estimate fuel cost. It might end up costing you more or less, probably more, but at least you'll have realistic expectations. Second daily category, food, drink, and miscellaneous. Basically, staying alive and clean. And maybe some other activities, but you know, the more those, the less fuel money there is. This, of course, depends on where you are in the world and on how basic and easygoing you are. Eating out in non-Western parts of the world is pretty affordable and sometimes downright dirt cheap. Though if you want to keep this up in western parts of the world like Europe, Australia and North America, then it's going to cost you. There, to save money, you buy ingredients to make sandwiches or wraps and at the end of the day, you cook. And are you okay with refilling water bottles? Most of Australia is pretty rural and out there. In most cases, you can only get bore water at petrol stations and roadhouses. There's a chance you'll uh, get the shits and uh, I did a few times and <coughs> oh shit can't get rid of this. Though the good news in my experience is that it only happens once and after that you can keep drinking the water without issues. I don't know if that's good advice but do as you will with that. But if you can do that then you'll spend about five Australian dollars per bottle and you usually drink about three to four liters a day and when you're in the tropical north you drink about five to six liters because you're sweating balls. That's 15 to 25 dollars a day just for water. So if you can rough it out a bit you can save money. The thing is that while you ride from country to country, the cost of living will fluctuate. You win some, you lose some, depending on where you are in the world. But on average, I'd say you can get by with 10 to 20 euros a day. And it can be lower in many countries in Southeast Asia, though it's off the charts once you go to Australia. I will say that for me, it certainly helped that I had experience backpacking on a shoestring. If you're flash, you'll obviously spend more money. The third and final daily expense is accommodation. Basically, the same applies here. It depends on where you are in the world and what your minimal level of comfort is. Do you need to stay in nice hotels? Or can you handle a shabby room or a smelly hostel door? The easier going you are, the less it will cost you. And don't be afraid to haggle down the price. On average, you'll spend 10 to 20 euros on a single room. And it can cost you even less in parts of Southeast Asia and Central America, though generally more in countries like Russia and Chile. And a lot more in high income countries like in most of Europe, Australia, New Zealand and parts of Asia like Japan. I rarely got accommodation there. And when I did, only hostels. So 20 to 30 euros a night. What I'll do then is camp a lot 
I mean literally almost every day for weeks and months on end. That's the secret to keeping up this kind of riding lifestyle long term when you're on a budget. Let us know in the comments how you usually spend your nights when you're out and about on the road. Also, if you're familiar with any other cheap or free options, let us know. Though besides camping and accommodation, there will be the times when people will invite you into their homes to spend the night because humans can be awesome like that. In some cultures, having a guest over is an honor. Persian culture was like that, to name one. Though all over the world, there will be hospitable people. You just have to be open for the experience. So in my experience, on that first stint to Vladivostok, you'll spend the nights evenly divided over those three categories. Again, this will depend a lot on circumstances and your personality. As you can see now, the costs have become less predictable. So, to finalize the daily estimates, we have the following numbers. Fuel was 1100 euros. Food and miscellaneous, minimum of 10 a day for six months. That makes 2,000 euros. Accommodation, one third of the time, so two out of six months. At a minimum of 10 euros a night, that makes 2,000 euros. Altogether, that makes about 5,000 euros. Though remember that this is definitely a number on the lower end. Imagine if you get accommodation all the nights, then this number jumps up to 6,000 and adds another 4,000 to the total. So like I said, all depends on circumstances and how you like to travel. Those were the daily expenses. And now I'm going to talk about the non-daily cost of motorcycle travel and I'll start with parts and repairs. Generally this will depend on the bike, distance traveled and the wages in the countries where you get the repairs done. Doing some of the maintenance yourself will obviously save you money and this is a good motivator to get started on that. So when others work on your motorcycle, pay attention but don't be in their way. All in all, I would say it will cost you at least 500 euros up to a thousand for about six months, though not taking into account serious breakdowns. And then there's the fees that you a lot of times have to pay to get into the country for yourself and the motorbike. Costs like visa fees, border fees, motorcycle registration fees, and motorcycle insurance fees. For many countries, you can find these costs online with a bit of digging, especially the cost of visas. I'm not going into details here because my goal was to keep it simple. Quick and dirty, remember? How much you spend on visas and other documents depends on the countries you're going to and how many. For example, the Russian visa will cost you there. It cost me almost 300 euros. Since you'll want a multiple entry business visa, which is more expensive than your regular tourist visa. In Australia, the registration, regio, and insurance will cost you. In contrast, crossing back and forth between Chile and Argentina will cost you nothing. Nada. So the more research you do into this category, the better you'll be able to predict the cost. But I would say that 60 euros is not too shabby of an estimate, though plenty of countries will cost you less or nothing like South America, but there will be more than a few that will cost you a lot more. If you go through countries like China and Myanmar on your foreign motorcycle, then you'll experience some real <laughs> exotic costs. But that's a completely different game. That's why I say to avoid surprises, it's definitely worth to at least plan your trip for a bit. I uh, talk about it in uh, one of the videos. To top it off, you might decide to get vaccinations depending on where you're going. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. And I would say that those will put you back something around 500 euros. Though this will heavily depend on where you're from and where you're going. Another pretty fluctuating cost depending on where you're from is travel insurance and health insurance. So I'm really not going to touch upon that. Sky can be the limit with those. The final category I want to touch upon is long-term travel. When you're going the intercontinental distance. In that case, you'll have to pay for flights. And intercontinental one-way tickets are usually something around 500 euros. By the way, double check if check baggage is included in the price. Otherwise, you'll be paying premium at check-in. And if you continue on the same ride, then you'll have to transport your motorcycle. As a rule of thumb, I'll say that sea freight will cost you around 900 euros, so about a thousand dollars, and air freight will cost you at least 1500 euros. And last but not least, in some countries you're going to need a carnet for your motorcycle, like in Australia, Iran, and many countries in Africa. It's basically a temporary import that you'll always have on you. The document fee for my carnet with the German ADAC was around 200, 300 euros. The deposit is based on a percentage of the new value of your motorcycle. Now imagine a 15,000 euro adventure bike. It can get crazy expensive real fast. Sure, if all goes well, you'll get that money back, but holy damn, that's a lot of money to cough up. For me, even my minimum deposit was tough to swallow at first. Anyway, I've already spent way more time on this than I had expected. 
and this was supposed to be quick and dirty. I could make another one in the future going deeper into the details depending on how well the video does and if people are interested. So let me know in the comments if you'd like that. Also, if you have any budgeting tips or suggestions based on your own trips, let us know. That way others can learn from your experiences. Alright folks, hope you'll have a good shower after this dirty quickie that lasted a bit longer than expected. And I hope that the numbers are a bit clearer now when it comes to this kind of travel. And like I said in the beginning, results may vary, but at least you'll have a good general idea before departure. And if you don't have your finances in order yet, you'll at least have an idea of how much more money you need. So start saving up. Do you really need all those monthly plans you're on? Stop eating out and going to the movies. Who cares about the latest gadgets? And now you have a good excuse to quit the booze and the drugs. And if you already have the money, good on you. You've earned it. If you think this video was helpful in any way, please subscribe if you haven't already and go brap on the like button. And please share this video with other riders out there, especially the ones who are ready to take that leap across the border. Now go ride, stay upright, and I'll see y'all soon enough. Ciao. Woo!